You may have heard this to Sue Bird's last game. So you may get some questions. Is, it, is that today? You may get some questions about Sue Bird. All right, let's go ahead and start in the room. Hands raised. I uh, haven't gone through an experience like this in your career. Did you kind of learn anything about you know, how to help so when you can take advantage of the emotions on the other side? Or I mean, there's certainly, if you're, you know, pokey, or no, well, I'm sure you're concerned cause just because there's so many distractions. Um, I don't know. Some people operate better in that mode. Um, you know, the building's going to be rocking and exciting, so that's always good um, when you're the home team, having that kind of energy. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know. I think everybody's different. Some people lock in better. Some people don't. What do you summarize, Susan? I don't think you can really quantify her impact. I mean, she's impacted it in so many ways. Um, individually, with her teammates, her community. Um, she's had so many different teammates, I'm sure, over the course of her, was it 20 some years or something? I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, and to be so good for so long, you know, a lot of people, you know, you have it like, nine to 10 years of really being amazing. She's been amazing for decades, you know, which is to me remarkable. Any uh, moment during the jumps out to you maybe as someone who played against her, coached against her, off the court? Well, we've had off the court fun. Um, she played in Russia, I played in Russia. We had all-star games that we played together. Um, she's a really funny person, kind of like a dry humor, but I love her sense of humor. Uh, she's just super funny and maybe we have a similar dumb humor, but, um, I think, I mean, she's hit so many big shots. She's a clutch. She's very clutch. Um, her decision-making down the stretch, um, her mind for the game uh, is impressive to me. That's, that's. At the end of the day, um, she has goat mentality for her teammates. She's made everybody great that has played on her teams. And in the process, she became great, you know, but she's really the person, her mentality of making everybody around her better and just reading the defense. What's the, what's the right play? Um, she's been spectacular at that her whole career. Um. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of emotions on Seattle's side. You talked about the buildings obviously going to be really rowdy and everything. Is there anything you kind of had to say to your team to get them prepared for this game in this moment? You know, I mean, um, I'm not going to say much. They know the deal. They're all bright individuals that have played against Sue, understand Sue's legacy and um, the moment. So uh, I shouldn't have to say much. Do you think that we could think of you talking about KP in that same light in the next, over the next 20 years? Yeah, KP will be in conversations like like this. Um, she's got the work ethic. She's a maniacal worker. Um, obviously, very skilled, very talented. Um, you know, she's she's very young in her career. You know, she's got a long ways to go, but she's starting to etch out um, herself into, into really important big time conversations for sure. And I only expect that to keep going like that. Go to the internet, Matthew. Morning coach. Uh, I was wondering, you know, you've talked so much since Ulster break about defense, but it seems like these last two games, the offense has struggled a little bit. You talked about missing shots in the first quarter against Dallas. Is there something you've seen after going back and watching those games that has caused you to struggle offensively, or do you think it's just missing shots? It's probably a combination. People have locked in on us. Washington's a very, very good defensive team. Um, very physical team. <clears throat> um, that was a one point game with three or four minutes left. Um, so for me, executing down the stretch, um, there is an element of the road. Um, I had, you know, we had four all-stars. They didn't get a break. We have to play another game with the Commissioner's Cup. Like, it's been a terror of 
games and my, it's hard to get my players uh, the proper rest they need. So all that being said, that we struggled, but some of it is just, I feel like our own struggles. Um, and offensively, we moved the ball, we played the right way. Um, we'll be fine. And then lastly, I wanted to ask, you've talked, I mean, every superlative has been given out for Asia Wilson, but what is it from a coaching standpoint, something that she does that we don't see or we don't understand, but you see and, and makes her better than maybe all the superlatives we give to her? <clears throat> I don't know. I guess you see what she does on the court, um, but her leadership, who she is as a person is very, very impressive. Um, she handles issues with the team before I even have to say a word. So she takes a lot off my plate um, in holding people accountable in certain ways. Um, but I think defensively this year, uh, she's just the paint. She, every every game, she, she's got, you know, one or two blocks where it's just disrespectful. Like her blocks are just crazy. Um, and so uh, that's one area that I think that she's just taken personal and you see a lot of growth there. Um, and then, you know, I think opening up her shooting threes now has just opened up a, such a large facet of her game and her ability to get to the rim and also get to the free throw line because of that, that three ball threat that she's, she's become. So, um, would you like me to keep going on? Cause I can, <laughs> but she is, uh, she's a great human being and she understands, um, she has, she just wants to win. And so when you have a, your leader that has that mentality of all I want to do is win, um, it, it, it's contagious. And I think at times, um, we got to have the buy-in factor, um, with everyone with the same mentality. Um, and for us, I like us when we play defense. So if we play defense locked in there, I like us when we're not locked in, we become very average and very beatable. Brian, top of the Asia Wilson question. Yeah. Um, so I go to Colorado State and it's really cool to see, you know, your past and CSU to where you are now. Could you just talk a little bit about your time at CSU and how that kind of prepares you for where you are now? Well, the fun thing that, um, and I felt was really advantageous for my career was um, I wasn't heavily recruited, you know, Tennessee, UConn, uh, all these big schools, you know, we're not knocking at my door. Um, going to Colorado State, I got to uh, start and have real court time for my entire four years, which you can't replicate that in practice. And I think going to a bigger school, a lot of times, you know, you sit for one or two years for sure until it's your turn. Well, it was my turn right when I arrived. So um, I had, I had, really good coaching. Greg Williams was a very good coach. Tom Collin was a very good coach. Um, and just really at how many people I know, if, even my freshman year, you know, he handed me the ball to go make plays. And that growth, I think for me at that age was, was really important, but um, obviously I had a really good recruiting class come in with me that helped with our success. Um, Katie Cronin and Shannon Randall's. And then once we got rolling a little bit, it was just I had freaking fun in college, man. <laughs> I had so much fun, such a great positive experience. So, um, and then, you know, it's always fun to play in front of people, you know, selling out the arenas. We sold out our senior year, so many games. Um, it's just, that's what you want to, that's what you want to do when you're an athlete. Um, when you're a basketball player, you want the stands filled. Um, even when they're cheering against you, it's still fun. Well, I hope we'll